I think the choice to study fire generally is a bit of an occupational hazard. It's true. We're not necessarily looking at the verdant green parts of our planet. We're headed to the end of the road. We're looking at areas of rainforest that have been cleared and burned. Uh, we're capturing scorched landscapes. series, we've been following the fire season around the world. First in the American West, in the early part of summer, the start of the fire season. Then in high northern latitudes, Canada and Alaska. Then finally in the Philippines, as the summer became fall. In the past, you could count on the fire season eventually coming to an end. But we're now learning that that's not really the case anymore. What we're seeing is that areas that have been flammable are becoming more flammable, pushing those systems into either extreme conditions or a year-round fire season where fires are literally possible at any time. We caught up with Dr. Doug Morton to find out the extent of the damage. Hotter and drier conditions, adding wind, you end up with fires that are moving faster and burning hotter than what we've seen before. Can we better understand, anticipate, and characterize the changes in our planet that come from those extreme fires? Actually, yes, we can. Myself and my staff at the GIS Center uh, worked closely with colleagues at Goddard Space Flight Center to make this thing happen. This is Keith Weber, the wildfire rehabilitation expert that pioneered a new groundbreaking tool. The Rehabilitation Capability Convergence for Ecosystem Recovery includes a function that allows fire responders to triangulate their wildfire response. The tool can geolocate everything from burned areas to potential landslides to impacts on endangered species. But Recover really gained momentum after one fire in particular. I remember looking at our whiteboard that shows all the real high um, high priority things we need to be doing. And that whiteboard was clear. And I was, I was walking out, I talked to some of my students and I said, I think the wildfire year is done. We got it wrapped up. Well, shouldn't have said that. Because the next day, one of our users in California, um, Woolsey Fire started going. Um, it became much larger than I think they thought it would because of those big winds and it, you know, it, it really grew very rapidly. Well, at that point, we were working with that team on a daily basis, doing refreshes as we call it, as the fire grew and grew and grew every day until we had that thing out. Keith's team is making a tangible difference by saving property, resources, and lives. Innovations like these represent a promising future. As we move from today's cutting edge science into tomorrow's prediction, response, and understanding, the work we do today opens up an opportunity to do that so much better going forward. There are so many science topics that today are on the cutting edge of our understanding and what get me and my science colleagues motivated to go out into the field and keep working on these problems. Can we improve the way that we can forecast, for example, fire risk, not just for tomorrow, but for 10 days from now, that might help managers, communities, prepare and respond to changing fire weather conditions? Like all of us, our NASA explorers and partners in exploration face the daily decision to either choose apathy or get to work. The future is uncertain, but we choose to meet the challenges of this new normal head on.